Okay, so this is a quick tutorial uh, running through a point cloud into Revit as a basic tool to start creating a sketch underlay. But instead of just a simple underlay, we're actually using a point cloud. Um, so we have this amazing church uh, in Springfield, Missouri, just off of our campus that our university has purchased to renovate back to its original condition um, called AME. Uh, church in Springfield, Missouri, um, notable because Reverend Brown, Reverend Oliver Brown, which was the Brown uh, in Brown versus Board of Education, moved his family from Topeka, Kansas, where the lawsuit was Brown versus Board of Education, into Springfield, Missouri. This is the church they resided in, where the schools happily attended uh, a public school here, um, which is awesome, something that our city got right and something I think our university is right in renovating this church back to its original condition. So we flew a drone over the top, about a 10 minute flight, took a lot of pictures obviously. Um, my wife who's a professional drone pilot uh, and a forensic scientist uh, uses Pix4D as her primary software. Um, so we took all those photographs in, created a point cloud, and then dropped that point cloud into Recap to prep it for Revit. So recap, really nice little piece of software. And we could have done a lot of the photogrammetry work, um, the photographs from, from the drone and put that together in recap. It's just my drone pilot is more familiar with Pix4D. And so that's what we used. So the things that I did here, um, I created a limit box to crop um, the parts that we did not need, right? So, I mean, you can come all the way through and sort of look sectionally even at these things. Um, but we went to the edges of the site that I have my students working on, a new project for our campus, um, and getting rid of some of that extra data. We re-centered um, the origin on this file, so hit confirm on that. Uh, we recentered the origin, which is right here, update origin, and simply selected a point um, approximately where our project is and selected OK on that. And then also just cleaned up some little point anomalies. Let's see if I can find one in here someplace. Yeah, you'll get these little dudes right here, but often they happen in larger groups. Just something that didn't quite come in correctly. Um, and so you can just go in and really quickly do a highlight, a lasso around the things that you don't want. Uh, there's a nice little cluster of them right here. You can just lasso and delete and just kind of clean up the edges of a few things here or there to get that point cloud working nicely. Uh, in particular, there were edges of tree branches and a lot of things over on this side that would have just been a little bit distracting in terms of something that I want to use to build a BIM model off of this church so we have the context for this. So. Our, our next task is to export this file. So right here, export. And I'm sending that um, file. And Revit's going to import an RCP file, a recap file. Um, so this is just my edit. I, I want to keep my original file. And this is just my edit for the church, right? Um, let's go. So. That's happening. We'll let that process in the background. It doesn't really take too long, just a couple of minutes um, tops for something like that. But we already have that done and brought into Revit. And to do that inside of Revit, let's just go File, New. So I can walk through what happened exactly with that and show you really, frankly, how easy it is. So that is Insert Point Cloud. I'm grabbing my RCP file and saying open, and yeah, it's already done. That simple, y'all. Now, the, the cleanup bit that I had to do, if I look at, let's say, my west elevation here. So let's go level one, and let's make sure that I'm actually seeing my elevation correctly. So I'm pulling that elevation tag out I'm pulling that over. If I go to my west elevation, You'll see things are a little bit wacky, right? It's a little bit leaning to the side and it's not quite on the ground plane. So the, the few things that I did really quickly with this is I can select my point cloud, my move tool, and I'm simply going to grab this bottom anchor right here and put that at my zero mark. And then I can select rotate. I'm going to move my point of rotation 
Again, right here, I'm going to go across my ground plane and then snap that back to my level zero. Yeah, and that's has it working level. And then I need to do the same thing with the XY rotation and plan view. But again, I've already done those things in my view. I've got it set up how I want it in this view right here. So a couple of simple rotations to make that happen. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is set up this beginning part of the model, this west side of the model. So if I go to my level one floor plan, I can start drawing in these walls. Uh, and I'm noting that these insets right here, those are going to be the insets where my windows are. Um, and so I can just sort of really focus on those outside edges. So I'm going to do a basic wall, eight inches, I'm going to draw in by the wall central line, and I'm just going to start someplace right about here in this corner. I'm not drawing by the wall center line, Dave. I want to draw finish face exterior. There we go. And so again, if you don't know, spacebar is gonna flip that wall one way or another. And let's come right down outside edge to outside edge. This is going to go in 18 feet. I've already done that measurement, so I know it. This is going to come in about one foot that direction, and then it's going to carry on as it heads back. So same thing right here. Wall, corner, 18 feet. And you can see it's lining up really nice right there. One foot. heading back. Cool, so that's that's a really good beginning for me. If I look at that in 3D, you can see how that's starting to play out really nicely for me. Right, you can see where I'm starting to cover that point cloud. But what I need to do next is I need this wall to start taking that form. And there's a whole diff lot of different ways to do it. In fact, there are some really nifty plugins that you can get that help you do this process, like selecting a group of points, and that's going to form a Revit wall. Uh, I'm using this to teach my introduction to computer, my introduction to digital design class at Hammond School of Architecture. So I, I'm much more interested in them actually sort of doing this um, step by step at a time. No, no automation here. Um, I, this is the way I'm teaching all these different tools. So we're going to edit the profile of the wall. So let's just skip back to that again really quickly. Selecting a wall, and I'm going to go edit profile. If I look at my wall now, I know I've got outside edge to outside edge. This should be on the center. So I'm just going to draw from the midpoint of that line up. I know that this ridge cap here should be approximately two feet. So I'm going to do, uh, or actually it's four feet. So I'm going to do an offset two feet both directions. And again, you can see like, this isn't going to line up perfectly, but we're going to get really, really close, okay? I know that I have, if I go back to my recap file, I have this ridge cap, this concrete ridge cap, masonry ridge cap. It's four inches thick, so we've measured that we know exactly how that's go going to work. So I need to start playing with that um, offset of four inches. So I'm going to inset four and then trim to start building that top cap and then deleting these outside pieces. Uh, essentially, I'm going to model that ridge cap in a separate pass, okay? So let's get this top line in so I'm just going to look right about the middle of that point cloud. And I'm going to chase this down. We'll add in this little bump right here in just a second. Let's bring that down to right. Here. And then across. And then again, I'm insetting that four inches that four inches 
I need to add in this little detail here to here. So let's split this line, trim it back together. Yeah, I probably should have done my offset first. Offset, four inches, four inches, trim, delete. Trim, delete, and select all of that. Mirror it about my center axis. And again, you can see I'm not perfect, but I am really, really close. So let's go from this to, again, trim. The outside edge of my wall to this piece, outside edge of this wall to that piece. I can delete what was the top of my wall, and I should at this point have a really good closed loop for the new form of that wall, just like that. Okay, so the last step that I'm going to do that I'm going to show in this tutorial is then how to start cutting windows. And again, I, my preference isn't to build these windows as a family. I would just rather cut the openings and then um, use uh, either a custom model or a curtain wall to begin insetting those windows. I, I just like the control of that as a system much more. So I'm going to go back to edit profile again. And I am going to drop a center line down. And I'm going to trace in this window. So over looks like three feet, four inches and up over three feet, four and up, and then let's build the arc. So it should be a little less than that, four, oops, wrong one, five, five, six, that feels better. So there's my window, and I'm going to copy it over, corner to roughly corner here. And then I need a little bit of a guideline so that I can mirror that to the other side. Green checky box, and now I have those windows cut and ready to go. And so if I hide, my point cloud, you can see how that's starting to come together. So the last little bit, let's put this concrete cap on. And again, there are some tools in Revit to do this maybe a bit faster, but I'm trying to teach the modeling tools here with this. So um, you can add it into the comments how you would do it. But for me, I'm going to go component model in place and generic. And I'm going to do a sweep right along the top edge of the wall. So I'm going to do a sweep by picking my path. So that's my path, green checkbox, and then the profile that I want along that sweep is going to start right here at the corner. It's going to overhang that brick two inches. Remember that was a four inch cap and then I'm going to turn that back together. Green checkbox, green checkbox, there's my cap that runs across the whole thing. And y'all, that's it. That's how this, uh, in terms of the workflow that we're starting to build, is going to work. Again, I would be adding in windows, starting to add in details, that porch cover, start getting these walls pulled up, adding the details the rest of the way around. But it's a really good, really simple way to start building a point cloud. Now, if you took, like getting to this point, um, this has been about a 15 minute tutorial, I believe, more or less, flying the drone. Um, now granted, that was a professional drone pilot, um, but it was about a 10 minute flight, um, a few minutes of work in the software to get the point cloud. Um, it took a while for the software to do that calculation, but we weren't working on it at that time. 
the cleanup and, and recap was another 10 to 15 minutes importing it to Revit. I've shown you all of that real time. Um, I, we're looking from drone flight point cloud to a full BIM model of the outside edge, maybe in under two hours. So this is an amazing workflow, much better than and much more accurate than trying to go out and find a way to measure some of these things that are almost unmeasurable in terms of everything, all the detail work that uh, is on this church, right? Um, it's it's just not going to happen any other way. And the workflow is so slick, so remarkable right now, and really for not a lot of money. Um, it's a $2,000 DJI drone. Um, yeah, this is an amazing workflow. Super happy to start teaching it. Um, and something that really every office is very capable of getting done. Cheers all. Take care.